to Blackest Night. I feel like there should be some like Michael Jackson playing behind me when this happens. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, Blackest Night number two. Awesome stuff here. Love this fucking cover. If you've seen any promotional art for this title, you've seen this cover. I'm not going to pretend it hasn't been around for quite a while. Ah, uh, there we go. Get rid of the glare. Um, but, uh, beautiful cover. It's just cool. It just features so many different characters in there, uh, in Black Lantern status. So, uh, sweet stuff. Uh, Blackest Night, again, continues to be fantastic. I love it. Uh, I know it's not, like, a story that is, like, so earth-shattering that it's going to change minds and opinions on racism. Uh, but it is fantastic. It, it, it's a summer blockbuster as a summer, block, summer blockbuster should be done if it included superheroes and zombies. And zombie superheroes. Uh, in outer space, nonetheless. What the fuck? Uh, this title has it all if you're a geek. Uh, I just want to point that out. Uh, so, love Blackest Night. Love Blackest Night. Love Blackest Night. Uh, I highly recommend uh, checking it out. If you're not checking it out already, I guess there's probably no convincing you at this point. But good stuff. Next up. Green Lantern Corps, Blackest Night, uh, number 39. Fantastic stuff again. Blackest Night uh, is through and through one of the best um, uh, event comics I've seen in a while because the tie-ins tie in so well. Uh, and Green Lantern Corps as a whole has tied into Green Lantern uh, by Jeff Johns. Green Lantern, Corps, uh, Green Lantern Corps, of course, by Peter Tomasi, who uh, edited Jeff Johns' Rebirth. Uh, so that's probably some of why they have such a great relationship here on this tit on these titles and, and great communication, clearly, because these things flawlessly, flawlessly tie together consistently, okay? Um, and tying into the other events... Uh, where I'm holding two in my hand here. One is Batman Blackest Night, which we'll cover in a second. Is also done by Tomasi. Um, and so you, you kind of see why it's probably doing a little better when you're holding three titles that are Blackest Night and two of them are done by one guy, okay? So, um, good stuff. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Beautiful art, Patrick Gleason. Uh, just Blackest Night, Green Lantern Corps in general. Even when Blackest Night is over, people, pick up Green Lantern Corps. Uh, go back and pick the trade paperbacks up. Uh, I'm not so sure that it's really getting lost in the shuffle because I'm pretty sure people just know it's fucking good. But if you don't know and you're picking up Green Lantern but not Green Lantern Corps, you're doing yourself a huge disservice, ladies and gentlemen. Go back, pick up the trades, pick up the issues, whatever you need to do. Fantastic stuff. All right, next up, we got Blackest Night Batman number one. Uh, this more or less focuses on uh, Dick. I just want to say Dick on uh, Dick Grayson, and uh, there's some pretty funky stuff here with Dead Man uh, and some uh, parents who are dead um, that may or may not be Dicky Dicks. So uh, cool stuff, cool art, um, just great time. Next up, we got Blackest Night Superman number one. Um, cool stuff. We got uh, we got Earth Two Superman up in the fucking house as a zombie. Cut. Not saying anymore. Awesome. Check it out. Check, check, check it out. All right, we're moving into Marvel now. Uh, let's see, what do we want to cover? Let's do Ultimates. Okay, so we got Ultimatum number one for Fantastic Four Requiem. Uh, or Fantastic Four Requiem Ultimatum. Probably don't need the one. It's a one-shot douchebag. Oh, I'm sorry. You fucking better be. Um... Oh, get your shit correct, son. Okay, so, um, get, oh, fucking glare. I just gotta keep remembering to put it over my fucking left shoulder. Uh, so Fantastic Four Requiem number one. Uh, cool. It is actually better, one of the better Ultimate F Fantastic Four issues I've read in a while, sadly to say. Um, so, I mean, the title wasn't so hot for me towards the end there anyway. But that was very good. It separates Fantastic Four into the wind. All four go their separate ways, and we'll see what happens to them, I guess. Next up, we got X Men Requiem number one uh, for Ultimatum. 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 Uh, great art, great story, cool stuff. Uh, I'm really interested to see what happens with the mutants. We now know that mutants are not the evolutionary standard. They are indeed just a manufactured product of man, no more different than a clone sheep. Um, so, or or even a, even a super soldier. They're weapons, bitches. Uh, so. Uh, 
I don't know. Where do they go from here? Uh, in the new Ultimate Universe, there's clearly just two titles, Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate Avengers. So where the X-Men will fit in, whether they'll merge with Ultimate Avengers uh, and Ultimate Spider-Man, which obviously we're seeing and we'll get to. Um, but uh, cool stuff. Um, great art, too. The artist was... Uh, oh, let's get it out. Let's get it out. Last name is Oliver, but let's get a full name in there. Why don't we? Uh, ben Oliver, uh, cool stuff. Here, I guess I can show you some, huh? I think that's very cool. Uh, so, I'd like to see more of his stuff around, that's for sure. Alright, next up, moving into Ultimate Marvel Comics. Uh, Spider-Man, I believe, is what we've changed to. Uh, instead of Ultimate, maybe it's just Ultimate Comics? I don't know, Ultimate Comics? It's not just Ultimate Spider-Man anymore. Uh, but anyway, Ultimate Spider-Man number one with the relaunch. Not sure why they relaunched it, to be 100% frank with you. Uh, who the fuck is Frank? Um, but uh, it just it seems organically to flow if you take a break like it does from the time stream. Um, but uh, other than that, I mean, what's the point uh, besides, you know, it's a fresh new Ultimate Universe? Whatever. Um, title like Ultimate Avengers, on the other hand, uh, is a definite... Definite tonal change um, and definitely warrants a restart, as well as the fact that Ultimate, uh, Ultimates at least, uh, traditionally had different sets that were like seasons, you know. So to restart at one for this one is organic for the title and it makes sense. Uh, Ultimate Avengers was awesome, awesome, awesome. Mark Miller and Pacho, whose name I'm getting wrong because I butcher artist names. Um, Beautiful art, beautiful writing, great combo. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to issue two. It actually was a lot better than I was expecting, I'll tell you that much. And I, and I was expecting it to be decent. Uh, probably better than decent, so good stuff. Check it out. All right, next up, we've got uh, House of M, Masters of Evil, number one. I got to admit, wasn't too impressed. You basically get the hood from the 616 thrown into the House of M universe. No changes, almost gives the same exact fucking speech that he gave uh, to convince the regular superpowered crooks and criminals and ne'er-do-wells uh, to, uh, to run him up with him in his superpowered kingpin of crime scheme. Uh, basically the same exact thing. So I'm not really sure uh, what the point of doing it is besides um, the idea of maybe cash grabbing or from what I've heard, the bookstore sales and library um, bookings for these titles have been pretty good. So I can understand wanting to get the product out there, but do something fresh, something that pleases everybody. Um, or, you know, what's the point of even putting it in the direct market otherwise? Uh, you could just put it out, you know, as a book. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. But one impress. Uh, the Marvels Project. Okay, I'm not going to lie, this sat around for a little while in my box. I know it's been a while since we've done these videos, so reference time is a little different. Uh, but I tend to read everything I can and things I don't get, don't read sit in a box and, and, and just get pushed and pushed and pushed until I finally get read. Uh, Wonder Woman is one of those titles, unfortunately. Gail Simone's run, not one of my favorites. Uh, how she could not get that character on that title to me is beyond me. I, I don't think she writes her all that awesome in that title. Secret Six, she nails her. She nails the Amazons in general. Um, I, it's the tone of the books, I guess, is different. And I, I guess it's probably not even that she doesn't write her well. I'm sure she does for people's tastes and the taste of that tone. But for me, the tone I enjoy is, is her Secret Six tone, and her Wonder Woman in there is fantastic. Um, and, and I tend to love Gail Simone's stuff. She, she's a very funny lady, um, and she, she's a fantastic writer. Uh, so... Uh, I don't know, I just, Wonder Woman, anyway, that's a whole other story. When that eventually gets run, I'll, I'll, I'll cover it. Anyway, so Marvel's Project was a title that sat in my box for a couple weeks, and then finally I was like, you know, I probably should read that. And I read it, and I was very impressed. Uh, Brubaker and Efting's work on that is really good, and I <laughs> take my invisible hat off to you gentlemen. Uh, I really should have stuck it out with you and, and read... Um, Read it quicker. I should have. I should have trusted in the brew baker. Uh, you've not steered me wrong yet, sir. Uh, especially when teamed with Mr. Epting. Uh, you know, such as on your Captain America run. Uh, so, my bad.